with any industry trends going on right now? Is there kind of anything that you see playing out over the next couple of years? Well, there's some difficulty with some of the government entities in the U.S. <clears throat> related to trying to control franchises and sort of a union look at things and and wages. That doesn't really affect us here at Schooly Mitchell because we don't really have a lot of employees and certainly not inexpensive ones. Right. Excuse me. So that's not an. But it, you know, as an overall effect on franchising, um, that's one thing that's going on. And I know the IFA is pretty serious and lobbying yeah. Congress to make sure that there is the right considerations before laws are passed by someone yeah. that doesn't really understand what's going on is being influenced by lobbyists of maybe uh, not the right motivations. Right. And as, as you speak about government restrictions, the first word that comes to mind is COVID. <laughs> um, what was it like for franchise owners during that time? And you know, a lot of times you hear recession proof. Can you speak on kind of Schooly Mitchell being recession proof or what is it like well, for franchise owners during kind of those economic downturns? Well, yeah. OK, first, let me address the COVID, the pandemic thing. Um, because of the nature of our business, uh, we were not affected by it at all mm. because we were, you know, part of our we'd have 15 different cost categories that we look at. I think I mentioned we yeah. started in telecom 25 years ago, but we look at 15 and it's soon going to be as many as 20 different cost categories where we wow. specialize. And so one of them is, you know, technology based. It's telecom, it's communication, it's conferencing. It's what we're doing right now. So yeah. we were already good at that. And we transitioned within two days of that shutdown back, back in March of 20 to oh, wow. a fully virtual model. And we led the way for a lot of our clients, teaching them how to do it. So, we yeah. never lost a nickel during the pandemic period in terms of average revenue for franchisees. So yeah. that's the first thing I'll say. The mm -hmm. second thing I'll say is I can't tell you how often I hear a company say that they're recession proof and yeah. they're really not. Yeah. You know, unless you're selling essential goods or services, you're not recession proof. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's a bad business. It just yeah. means you're not recession proof because in a recession, disposable dollars disappear. Well, if there's yeah. no money to buy what you sell, it's not your fault. It's just the way it is. However, yeah. in Schooly Mitchell, we're 100% recession-proof because what do we do? We cut costs. Well, that's exactly what companies need to do during a pandemic or inflation or recession, and we don't yeah. charge money to do it. So yeah. we are truly elastic to economic conditions. And in a good economic time, people are expanding more, using more of what we consult about, and they need our help to keep that expansion going properly. So, yeah, we truly are. Whereas most most companies really are not, unless it's essential goods. Yeah, no, it's so funny reading about all the different services and goods that are, you know, recession proof or, you know, the stock market's recession proof. And, you know, it's just it's just crazy, you know. But on, that doesn't model, make any sense. Yeah. Right. Then, doesn't I had a I had a franchise where <laughs> they were doing a presentation. I just happened to be in the room. They were an eyelash company and I they said they were recession proof. And I'm mean, come on. If there's anything yeah. gets cut out when there's no money, it's stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Luxury goods are always number one. Of course. <laughs> yeah, no, that's super fascinating. I even just think back to the pandemic with my father being a franchise, um, franchise owner, franchisee, you know, that's exactly what they're looking for during those times, how to reduce their costs. You know, right. a lot of times people think, you know, employment's how you reduce costs. But if there's an easier way to reduce your costs, you know, it just makes sense. Well, see, that's our message to our clients. You can cut costs by cutting employees or essential things that you do, but that harms your business. You know, mm -hmm. recovering from that is not easy and it may right. even be detrimental and cause big harm. Whereas if you cut some costs in these other areas, just because you're overpaying and don't realize that there's errors in your bills, you're over provisioned or you just don't have the right prices. Now you're affecting bottom line without affecting anything essential at all. That's mm -hmm. our main message to our clients. No, that's a really strong model. And it, it's just really attractive for everyone. Do you guys work with a lot of other franchisees with your model? Uh, you, you mean as clients? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Any type of business. You know, certainly if you think about a franchisee and you look at the ex expenses they have, they might have uniforms. They're going to have office supplies. They might have yeah. waste. They might have merchant services. They might have telecom. We do all those things. So, yes, absolutely. Either the franchisee or groups of franchisees or even the franchisor. No, that's awesome. It, you know, right away, you think you help from a numbers perspective, but you also help from that people and culture perspective. And 
really just give people that full rundown of how their expenses work. When you guys walk into an operation, you know, you mentioned you're working on 50 different services. Do you focus on 